Friends, it is Thursday, May 21st. We have an assignment today. We have one next Tuesday and one next Thursday. That's it. And then the week after that, it's all about catching up any missed assignments or checking into Zoom so you can do homework with me. Sound good? Chapter 12. <clears throat> I promise you that this is the last time that I will use the phrase, meanwhile, back at the ranch. But I think of no other way to return to the moment when Klaus had just explained to Mr. Poe what Sonny had meant by shouting, Aha! And now everyone in the reptile room was staring at Stefano. Sonny looked triumphant. Klaus looked defiant. Mr. Poe looked furious. Dr. Lucafont looked worried. You couldn't tell how the incredibly deadly viper looked because the facial expressions of snakes are difficult to read. Stefano looked back at all these people silently, his face fluttering as he tried to decide whether to come clean, a phrase which here means admit that he's really Count Olaf and up to no good, or perpetuate his deception, a phrase which here means lie, lie, lie. <coughs> uh, Stefano! Mr. Poe said, <coughs> and coughed into his handkerchief. Klaus and Sonny waited impatiently for him to continue. <coughs> no, Stefano, explain yourself. You have just told us that you're an expert on snakes. Uh, previously, however, you <coughs> told us you knew nothing of snakes and therefore couldn't have been involved in Dr. Montgomery's death. What is going on? Um... When I told you that I knew nothing of snakes, Stefano said, well, I, I was being modest. I, Well, now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go outside for a moment, and you weren't being modest, Klaus cried. You were lying, and you are lying now. You're nothing but a liar and a murderer. Stefano's eyes grew wide, and his face clouded in anger. You have no evidence of that, he said. Yes, we do, said a voice in the doorway, and everyone turned around to find Violet standing there, with a smile on her face and evidence in her arms. Triumphantly, she walked across the reptile room to the far end, where the books Klaus had been reading about the Mambo de Mall were still stacked in a pile. The others followed her, walking down the aisles of reptiles. Silently, she arranged the objects in a line on top of a table. The glass vial with the sealed rubber cap, the syringe with the sharp needle, the bunch of folded papers, a card laminated in plastic, the powder puff, and the small hand mirror. <coughs> oh, what is all this? Mr. Poe said, gesturing to the arrangement. This, Violet said, is evidence which I found in Stefano's suitcase. Um, my suitcase, Stefano said, is private property which you are not allowed to touch, and it's very rude of you, and besides, it was locked. It was an emergency, Violet said calmly, so I picked the lock. <coughs> how did you do that, Mr. Poe asked. Well, nice girls shouldn't know how to do such things. My sister is a nice girl, Klaus said, and she knows how to do all sorts of things. Woofik, Sonny agreed. Well, we'll discuss this later, Mr. Poe said. Well, <clears throat> in the meantime, well, please continue. When Uncle Monty died, Violet began, my siblings and I were very sad, but we were also very suspicious. We weren't suspicious, Klaus exclaimed. If someone is suspicious, it means that they're not sure. We were positive. That Stefano killed him. Oh, nonsense, Dr. Lucafont said. As I explained to all of you, Montgomery, Montgomery's death was an accident. The Mombo de Mall escaped from its cage and bit him. And that's all there is to it. I beg your pardon, Violet said, but that is not all there is to it. Now, Klaus read up on the Mombo de Mall and found out how it kills its victims. Klaus walked over to the stack of books and opened the one on top. He had marked his place with a small piece of paper, so he found what he was looking for right away. Ahem. The Mambo de Mall, he read out loud, is one of the deadliest snakes in the hemisphere, noted for its strangulatory grip, used in conjunction with its deadly venom, 
giving all of its victims a tenebrous hue, which is ghastly to behold. He put the book down and turned to Mr. Pope. Strangulatory means... We know what the words mean, Stefano shouted. Then you must know, Klaus said, that the Mambo de Mal did not kill Uncle Monty. His body would, didn't have a tenebrous hue. It was as pale as it could be. <clears throat> That's true, Doc, or Mr. Poe said, uh, but it doesn't necessarily indicate that Dr. Montgomery was murdered. Yes. Dr. Lucafant said, perhaps just this once, the snake didn't feel like bruising its victims. Well, it is more likely, Violet said, that Uncle Monty was killed with these items. She held up the glass vial with the steel rubber cap. This vial is labeled Venom du Mal, and it's obviously from Uncle Monty's cabinet of Venom samples. Then she held up the syringe with the sharp needle. Stefano, Olaf, took this syringe and injected the venom into Uncle Monty. And then he poked an extra hole so it would look like the snake had bitten him. Um, but I loved Dr. Montgomery, Stefano said. I would have nothing to gain from his death. Now sometimes, when someone tells a ridiculous lie, it is best to ignore it entirely. When I turn 18, as we all know, Violet continued, ignoring Stefano entirely. I inherit the Baudelaire fortune, and Stefano intended to get that fortune for himself. It would be easier to do it if we were in a location that was more difficult to trace, such as Peru. Violet held up the small bunches of folded paper. These are tickets for the Prospero, leaving Hazy Harbor for Peru at 5 o'clock today. And that's where Stefano was taking us when we happened to run into you, Mr. Poe. But Uncle Monty tore up Stefano's ticket to Peru, Klaus said, looking confused. I saw him. That's true, Violet said, and that's why he had to get Uncle Monty out of the way. He killed Uncle Monty. Violet stopped for a moment and shuddered. He killed Uncle Monty and took this laminated card. It's Monty's membership card for the Herpetological Society. Stefano planned to pose as Uncle Monty to get on board the Prospero and whisk us away to Peru. <coughs> um, but... I, I don't understand, Mr. Poe said. How did Stefano even know about your fortune? <sighs> because he's really Count Olaf, Violet said, exasperated that she had to explain what she and her siblings and you and I knew the moment Stefano arrived at the house. He may have shaved his head and trimmed off his eyebrows, but the only way he could get rid of the tattoo on his left ankle was with this powder puff and a hand mirror. There's makeup all over his left ankle to hide the eye, and I bet if we rub it with a cloth, we can see the tattoo. Oh, that's absurd, Stefano cried. <clears throat> we'll see about that, Mr. Poe replied. Now, who has a cloth? Not me, Klaus said. Not me, Violet said. Ghouly, Sonny said. Well, if nobody has a cloth, we might as well forget the whole thing. Dr. Lucafant said, but Mr. Poe held up a finger to tell him to wait. And to the relief of the Baudelaire orphans, he reached into his pocket and he withdrew his handkerchief. <coughs> Your left ankle, please, he said sternly to Stefano. Oh, but, uh, but you've been coughing all day into that, Stefano said. It has germs. <coughs> <coughs> if you are... <clears throat> really who the children say you are, Mr. Poe said, then germs are the least of your problems. Your left ankle, please. Stefano, and this is the last time, thank goodness, we'll have to call him by his phony name, gave a little growl, <clears throat> pulled his left pant legs up to reveal his ankle. Mr. Poe knelt down and rubbed it for a few moments. At first, nothing appeared to happen, but then, like a sun shining through clouds at the end of a terrible rainstorm, the faint outline of an eye began to appear. Clearer and clearer, it grew until it was as dark as it had been when the orphans first saw it, back when they had lived with Count Olaf. Violet, Klaus, and Sonny all stared at the eye, and the eye stared back. And for the first time in their lives, the Baudelaire orphans were happy to see it. Okay.
Okay, friends, next time is chapter 13. All right, I miss you. Uh, if you need help, make sure that you go on to um, Zoom. Today we're Zooming at 2 o'clock. And if you want a different Zoom time, let me know. And I would be more than happy to sit down with you and help you with your homework. All right. If you need anything, just let me know. Smell you later.